see at the Brain Performance Center, anytime you hit your head, you change the way those neurons and dendrites are wiring and firing. And I think everybody has hit their head. And let me tell you why. Each year, there are approximately 2.5 million sports concussions, and that's in high school sports alone. And that's not just all football. There's girls soccer, there's lacrosse that also have high incidence rates. Statistics report over 300,000 pediatric sports or recreational ER visits. Falls are the number one cause for hospitalization for with brain injury, and I can relate to that. Car accidents and car wrecks is number two. But the sad part is five out of 10 concussions go unreported and undetected. All concussions are serious. So many people will say to me, oh Lee, it was no big deal. I didn't even lose consciousness. Well, only 10% of the people that have a concussion do lose consciousness. A concussion is a traumatic brain injury. And it comes with many different signals and signs, and they can affect you on your, the way you think. They can affect the way you respond to problems, your balance, or your vision. On a cognitive level, you may be confused, or you may be distracted. You may have amnesia. You may simply not be able to focus. Some people will get headaches. Some people like migraines, throbbing. Some people will have a very sensitivity to light or to sound. Some will be nauseous. They can impact you all in many different ways. But you know, stop and think about it. When you've seen somebody take a hit to the head, whether it's in boxing or at a rodeo, someone falls off a bull and they stay, stand up and they try to shake it off, but they have this vacant stare in their eyes, that really makes me wonder, how is that brain wiring and firing? To fully understand a brain injury, you have to look at the history, because no one brain injury stands alone. How many of you have ever fallen off a bike without wearing a helmet? Or have you fallen more than three feet off the ground? Have you fallen down maybe just five steps? stairs at a time? I did, and I ended up in ICU. When I left ICU, I was told that I had lost my sense of smell as a result of the injury. And I was so relieved. I had young boys, and to think of losing a sense, my eyesight, my, my hearing, I was horrified. But did you know there's more emotional memory tied to your sense of smell than anything? Close your eyes and think about Thanksgiving. You think about what you smelled when you walked into the kitchen. Good news is, is I was able to get my sense of smell back with neurofeedback. But honestly, loss of smell was the easy part. It was what the doctors didn't tell me. I realized at some point after the accident that I couldn't read anymore. I had lost my visual processing. And honestly, I just thought I was burnt out. I just finished an MBA. I'd finished a leadership program with Exxon Enterprises. I had two little kids who had time to read. Oftentimes, it's what we don't or not told that is really the problem for us in life. It's what people don't diagnose. And brain injury is both physical and emotional trauma. The physical trauma, the swelling, the bruising, that goes down. That goes away, but the emotional trauma, that continues to live in our subconscious. The way that the brain allocates and utilizes resources oftentimes changes as a result of a brain injury or a concussion. At the Brain Performance Center, we look at the brain, and we look at four things in the brain to see how that brain is working. We do a quantitative EEG, and that lets us look at three things, the power, the coherence, and the phase. The power, that's all those slow, medium, and fast ways we have going on in our brain, and we need all of them, but we need the right amount. Coherence is the way that the brain shares information, and honestly, doesn't matter to me if the brain's sharing too much or not enough information. It's dysregulated, and phase is the timing. Has anybody ever come running up to you? I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, but I just got to tell you this. Timing's too fast in that brain. 
And then sometimes the timing can be too slow. You know, have you ever watched somebody, they watch a conversation, they're very attentive, they wanna be in that conversation. But by the time they think of what to say, and they say it, it's like, gee Lee, we were talking about that 10 minutes ago. We also use lens to look at neuroplasticity. And neuroplasticity is the brain's ability to change. Each protocol that we do is custom and individualized. If you're willing to invest in the right software, you can manipulate that data, you can export that data, and the answer is in the data as to what networks and hubs in the brain are the most dysregulated. If you've ever played a sport, or you've ever been in a car accident, or you've ever fallen down a flight of stairs, like me, or just simply wrestled with a sibling, you have hit your head. Never underestimate the power of a brain injury. Sometimes the signs and symptoms will show up immediately within 24 hours. Sometimes it's weeks, sometimes it's months. Sometimes those symptoms are so subtle, you don't even really relate it with the brain injury. And when we go through real stressful times, those symptoms will become more pronounced and then we realize it. Anybody who suffers from a brain injury, no matter how mild, should seek professional help because you need to understand what has happened in the brain. If I can help you with that in any way, being in ICU twice has left with me with a little bit of insight about the brain. I'd be happy to help you in any way that I can. Thank you.